Here's what I want us to do this morning before we bring to you the word of the Lord teaching today. If you're physically able, I ask you to stand to your feet all across this building. If you're physically able, the Lord is here right now. The presence of the Lord is among us right now. The glory of the Lord is among us right now. There's angels in this house right now. And if you desire God to speak to our heart and mind and spirit, if you desire God to do a good work in us today, I want you just to raise your hands right now and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and let God do that work right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a spirit work. It's not a man work. It's a spirit work right now. It's not a shout work. It's a spirit work right now. That's it. Some of you are feeling the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you are feeling the presence of God right now. Some of you are feeling the unction of Almighty God right now. And that which you feel is the Spirit of the Lord in this house. I praise your name today, God. I worship your name today, God. I magnify your name today, God. I magnify your name today, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We want to dismiss our junior high, senior high class. We love our young people so very, very much. Would you give all of our young people a great big hand? We love them so very, very much and thankful. Amen for what the Lord is doing in them and through them. If you just remain standing for the reading of the word of the Lord, I want to bring something to you today that we need to be reminded of and that we as a church need to strive for like never before. And I believe that we are. I believe that we are in that vein. I believe that we are in the place that God would have us to be. But I want to draw your attention today to Luke chapter... 24, Luke chapter 24 and verse 49, Luke chapter 24 and verse 49, and then going from there to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5 and verse 12, Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 and Acts chapter 2. 1 through 4 in Acts chapter 5 and verse 12. Do you love the Word of God? Do you really love the Word of the Lord? Do you love the Word of God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Are you thankful for the Word of God? Do you love living the Word of God? Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. We're glad to be home. Amen. We had a wonderful vacation. I think I rested more this vacation. And I have in the past, and I let Sister Sean and Lana do whatever they wanted to do, and I was just along for the ride. Amen. And nothing wrong with that. And so I was, but yeah, that's a very smart thing sometimes. I agree. And uh, she kept asking me, well, what do you want to do? And I said, whatever you want to do. And then, where you want to eat? I said, wherever you want to eat. What time you want to get up tomorrow? Whatever time you want to get up tomorrow. And uh, it was a wonderful thing. About halfway through the vacation, she said, I wish you would just tell me what it is you want to do. And so I like that. Amen. <laughs> So I started telling her, (laughs) amen, amen, (laughs) amen. Luke chapter 24, glad to be home. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. You ready for the word of God? Can I just teach to you from my heart today? And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until, everyone shout until, until Until. be patient, don't leave until it happens, don't move from there until it transpires, don't walk away until it falls on you, Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost, until ye be endued with power from on high, turning over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, you will find where that power and that promise which the Lord spoke of fell on them. Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, it says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, everyone shout all, they were all with one accord in one place. 
And suddenly, everyone shout suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all, everyone shout all. All. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Turn to your neighbor and tell him that promise is for you as well. Acts chapter 5, one last portion of Scripture. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12. It says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. By the help of the Lord today, I want to teach to you on this subject, a spirit church. A spirit church. More than ever before, I want this to be a spirit church. I want it to be a spiritual church. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If that's your desire, rubbo shanda di 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 da 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 bahai. If that's your desire, would you raise your hands right now and let's pray that God would help us like never before to be that church in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for what I feel right now. I thank you for the touch of the Holy Ghost that I feel right now. I thank you for the unction of Almighty God that I feel right now. I thank you for the glory of the Lord that I feel in this house, this very moment. And God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. And I thank you for the word of God today. And I thank you for the spirit of Almighty God that's here this very moment. And God, we move in the Holy Ghost today and the power and the demonstration that you have given us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shout amen. Amen. If you're thankful, would you put your hands together and give the Lord praise. Amen. The Lord is good. Turn your neighbor and tell them a spirit church. Shout it again, a spirit church. We find that during the ascension, the apostles listened. You can be seated. Listened and responded to the Lord's instruction in Luke 24 and verse 49 where we read, Wait in Jerusalem until you are clothed or endued with power from on high. That word endued there means clothed. Like you would take and put something up on you. He is saying, wait in Jerusalem until there is something that actually consumes you and is placed upon you and totally covers you. Everyone shout, totally covers you. And so the Bible says the apostles waited. They waited because the Lord Jesus told them to wait, but there was more to this waiting than that, much more something powerful was to happen to them when their wait was finally over. On Pentecost Day, the Holy Ghost would change them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Fear would be turned into a martyr's boldness and fishermen would become the world's teachers and doubt would be replaced by mountain moving faith all because of Pentecost. Sometimes we do not realize how much we need Pentecost. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we do not understand how much we really need Pentecost, especially in the day and hour that we are living in. I have been in a lot of churches, and a lot of churches need good old-fashioned Pentecost. Oh, I've been in a lot of gatherings, and there's a lot of gatherings that just need an old-fashioned Pentecost experience. I have been in a lot of services that need just an old Pentecostal experience. But I'm glad to tell you that we are a part of a church that understands and knows what a Pentecostal experience is all about. I feel Pentecost in our worship. I feel Pentecost in our praise. I feel Pentecost in our preaching. And I feel Pentecost in our demonstration. There's nothing like a moving of the Spirit of God in a service that's involved in praise and worship. Can you say amen? Amen. Pentecost is the birthday of the New Testament church. Pentecost is God giving His Spirit to all believers, not just a few. Everyone shout all believers. 
No longer was the Spirit to dwell in a building, the temple, like in the Old Testament. There God in the form of His Shekinah, the cloud, revealed Himself to His people above the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. Because of Pentecost, all Christians have been brought into the royal priesthood, and each Christian is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Pentecost also shows that Christianity isn't some human-created religion. If Christianity was simply of human design, even if it were the best and most beautiful religion, the disciples wouldn't have needed to wait in Jerusalem for Pentecost. Why would they need to? Jesus' disciples had lived with him for several years in most intense and personal seminary training, and they could have begun writing and teaching and passing on what they had learned without a Pentecost. And Jesus had fully trained them. Now it was time for them to start training others, correct? That is how it was with other religions. Not so with this thing called a Pentecostal experience. For you see, for Christianity and this Pentecostal experience isn't just about ideas. It isn't just about moral guidance or ethical norms. Christianity, of course, should be and have these things, but that's not what the Christian faith is all about. If it were, Christianity would be more than other, just a form of Phariseeism. No, Christianity is about the Holy Ghost calling someone through the gospel, enlightening him with his gifts and moving in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Let me stop right here and say this today, that it is not the will of God for us to just come to church. Let me stop right here and say this today, it is not the will of God just for us to come and put our hour and a half, two hours in, two and a half hours in and just walk away the same way we came. That is not the will of God. It is not the will of God for us just to have service as usual and preaching as usual and worship as usual. It is the will of God for every one of us to be consumed by the power and the presence of Almighty God and the anointing of God from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. I've told you this a long time ago and I'm going to tell you again. I do not want to have church as usual. I do not want to have a move of the Holy Ghost as usual. I do not want to have preaching as usual. I want a demonstration of the power and the anointing of Almighty God. And it comes through the Spirit. Pentecost is just what Jesus promised when he said he would send another help, a counselor, a guide, a comforter, as God breathed into Adam, and he became a living being. Likewise, God breathes the Holy Ghost into his people, and his people come alive. There's something about the Holy Ghost. How, how many of you remember the day that God filled you full of the Holy Ghost? How many of you remember the day that God filled you so full of the Holy Ghost that you couldn't contain yourself? That, that there was just something moving on the inside of you. There was just something stirring on the inside of you. When you came to church, you couldn't contain yourself. You was the first one to stand. You was the first one to clap your hands. You was the first one to shout. And you was the first one to run the aisle. Because years ago, prior to that, you felt like you were just dead. For the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. You just felt dead. You, there just Death was all over you. And death was, was on your mind. And death was in your heart. And death was in your spirit. And you just felt like there was no reason to live. And, and you had no hope. And you had no answer. And you had no way out. But when you came to an apostolic church... I'm not talking about just any church. I'm talking about an apostolic church. When you came to an apostolic church that believed in the Holy Ghost outpouring and believed in baptism in Jesus' name and let the Spirit do its work, there was something that got a hold of you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, and it was like fire shut up in your bones, and you were alive, and you felt alive like never before. Honey, I've come to tell you, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. That Holy Ghost I experienced when I was seven years old, it is just as powerful, it is just as great it is just as mighty as it is right here, right now, in my life. All oh, if you're thankful for the Holy Ghost, give God praise and thank him right now for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 That's what Pentecost is all about. The Spirit gives living breath. And filled with the Spirit, God's people become alive, unable to be silent. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be silent in the day and hour we're living in. I'm going to say that again. You should not be silent in the day and hour that you are living in. You need to take a stand for godliness like never before. You need to take a stand for righteousness like never before. You need to take a stand for holiness like never before. 
You need to take a stand for the ways of God like never before. I'm tired of the church being silent. We got all these people coming out of the closet and the church going into the closet. Oh, in case you didn't hear that, I'm going to say it again. We have too many people coming out of the closet and the church going into the closet. It's time for the church to be out of the closet and stay out of the closet and declare what thus saith the word of God and let our world know what is truth and what is right and what is wrong. All of you believe that, clap your hands and give God praise. It's not the day to be quiet. It's not the day to be silent. Now is the day to stand for what you believe in. Now is the day to stand for the things of God. Amen. Filled with the Spirit, God's people become confessing and proclaiming Jesus Christ with miracles, signs, and wonders being wrought by their hands. But sadly, so sadly, many Christians live as if they are stuck between Ascension and Pentecost. As if Pentecost never happened. If the apostles had remained in the state of limbo, the state that they were in between Ascension and Pentecost, they would have never brought the gospel to the world. They would have never lived out the faith as they did. They would never die for the faith as they did. They certainly would have never preached as they did, and they would never have been able to move and operate in the Spirit with signs and wonders following as they did. Their faith life and their walk with God and their ministry was what it was because God's Spirit was blowing And God's spirit was moving and God's spirit was breathing within them and upon them. When the Holy Ghost filled the church, the disciples were able to perform both signs and wonders as the Bible declared to us in Acts chapter 5 and verse 12. Let me say this, that when a church walks in the economy of the Holy Ghost and when the church walks in the power and the demonstration of of the Holy Ghost. The supernatural becomes the natural. Oh, yes. When a church walks in the economy of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost, the abnormal becomes the normal. And the unimaginable becomes imaginable. What is the key here? I'll tell you what the key is. It is to let the Holy Ghost control the environment. I said it's to let the Holy Ghost control the environment. It is to let the Holy Ghost do its work. And it's to let the Holy Ghost move among us. And it's to let the Holy Ghost saturate us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. It is not the will of God for man to control the environment. It is not the will of God for saints to control the environment. It is not the will of God for guests to control the environment. I've been into a lot of Pentecostal churches where there were guests that walk into the house. And because guests would walk into the house or because a television crew would show up, you know what would happen? They begin to shut down the moving of the Spirit. They begin to say, oh, eyes are upon us now, so we must be careful what we do, what we say, how we act. Television crews are here today, so, so we must control ourselves and not be as radical as we usually are and not let the Spirit of God move and flow as it usually does. You know what? That's a bunch of foolishness. If it says apostolic on the marquee, if it says apostolic on your handouts, if it says apostolic in your church, honey, it's best for you just to be apostolic. Oh, anybody believe that in the house of the Lord today? It's best for you just to be apostolic. Apostolic from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Apostolic inward and outwardly. There's nothing like being apostolic. They already know you're crazy, so why not disappoint them? They already know we have a move of God. Why not disappoint them? They already know we're led of the Spirit. Why not disappoint them? Hallelujah. There's just something about being apostolic. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Many have dismissed this church as being outdated and irrelevant. Well, that's false. The church is not outdated. I said the church is not outdated. I'm going to say that again. The church is not outdated. It's just as powerful as what it was in the days of old. I'm trying to get a hold of some of you right now. The church is not getting weaker. It's getting stronger. I said the church is not getting weaker. It's getting stronger. 
The church is not going down. It's going up. It's more mighty and more powerful than it's ever been in the day and hour. Jesus Christ is the same today, today and forever. If you believe that, clap your hands and give God praise. He's the same. He's the same. If he did in the book of Acts, he'll do it right here, right now. If he anointed the apostles to move in signs and wonders, he's anointing us to move in signs and wonders. The world says that there are many groups or organizations that you can belong to that they believe are serving the world's needs much more effectively. You can explain the church's worship and be told that you can worship alone. You can boast of the church's social services and others will quickly point to the Red Cross and other agencies that seem to be much more effective at meeting the needs of people. You can speak of the peace of mind and stability that the church provides only to hear of the marvelous things happening in psychology and mutual help groups. So we are faced with a large dilemma. How does one begin to effectively explain the continuing importance of the church? Especially to people who live in a world that is skeptical about the church and trying to escape what society terms as organized religion. Probably the best approach would be to start by discovering where the church came from. The church may superficially resemble other organizations, but nothing even begins to compare because the church was designed and conceived in the mind of God. Think of any club or organization the world has to offer and you'll soon discover that nothing can hold a candle to what our God has established, the church of the living God. From the moment this church that I'm speaking of came to be, the people were fired up. They were exhibiting the critical characteristics of a healthy church and they were doing church the way the Lord Jesus Christ intended it to be done. The church was alive and well. Now, now, there are several ways, and let me stop right here to break this down a little bit. There are several ways that we can distinguish a living church from a dead church. You ready? Here we go. Here's a few. Living churches are constantly changing. Dead churches don't have to. I'm going to say that again. Living churches are constantly changing. But dead churches do not have to. Living churches have a lot of noisy kids. Dead churches are fairly quiet. Children do not bother me. Children getting up every once in a while. Notice I said every once in a while. Not all the time. But every once in a while getting up and using the bathroom or having to pick up paper off the off the floor, or out of the pew. Every once in a while is not a bad thing. Some people get mad at children making noise during service. And some people get mad at children because they leave a mess in Sunday school class. And some people get mad at children because they happen to take your seat or they happen to just get away from a parent and run across the church. You know what? Stuff like that really don't bother me because I know that we are a living church and we are alive. We are a live church. If you do not have children in a church, you're going to be a dead church. Let me go as far as saying this, that living churches are constantly improving for the future. Dead churches worship their past. They go to the attic of their experiences and they pull out memories of what it used to be. They go to an attic on Sunday morning and pull out that touch of God that used to be and that miracle that used to be and that blessing that used to be and that anointing that used to be. I am so thankful that we do not have to go to our attic every Sunday morning and say, I wish I could just get a hold of the photo album and, and reminisce about yesterday's revival and yesterday's touch and yesterday's move of the Holy Ghost and yesterday's experience. No, every Sunday morning, every time we gather to the house of the Lord, it is not a yesterday experience. It is a today experience. It is a today in anointing. It is a, a today unction. It is a today spirit. And so living churches are constantly improving for the future. Dead churches worship their past. Living churches move out in faith. Dead churches operate totally by human sight. Living churches focus on people. Dead churches focus on programs. Now, don't get me wrong, programs are important. Sometimes you've got to have programs to move people. Right? 
You see, there's a lot of people that will show up for a potluck dinner. Oh, yeah. You just hope that prior to that potluck dinner, you do something to where you can move them to the things of God and the ways of God. But you know, a lot of people show up for potluck dinner, but a lot of people won't show up for prayer meeting. Oh, I'm going to go there whether you want me to or not. A lot of people will show up for potluck dinner and ice cream social, and they won't show up for a Bible study because they're more concerned about what man can give them than what God can instill within them. It's not about what man can give me, and it's not about potluck dinners and ice cream socials and pizza bashes and block parties. It's all about the moving of the Spirit of God in my life and getting a hold of the Spirit of God and operating in the dimension that God would have me to operate in. That's what it's all about. Living churches are filled with givers. Now I'm going here. I'm going to be pastor right now. Living churches are full of givers. Where dead churches are filled with tippers. I know some of you don't like that, but it's true. Living churches, churches that are alive, are givers. They just give. 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 If I got to sell something to give to the work of God, I'm going to sell something to give it. That's apostolic. This is not foreign. This is not uncommon. This is apostolic. Recall what they did in the book of Acts. They said all they had and had all things common. Where the, where the kingdom of God could be furthered, the kingdom of God could be exalted of God could be a progress in the day and hour that we're living in. We have a lot of people that are just tippers. They tip God if God does something. Woo! I'm preaching and teaching right now whether you believe it or not. My, 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 my. I, I've been to a restaurant before and I was with somebody and uh, sometimes I get really embarrassed when I eat with people. Anybody else get there? Get like that? You get embarrassed when you eat with people. Sometimes I get so embarrassed when I eat with people. Sometimes I don't like going out with people. I just rather go by myself and my family. I get so embarrassed because some people, when they, when, 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 they, when they get a meal that's not correct, they want the waiter and the waitress and the whole restaurant to know about it. I'll never forget one time I was with somebody at Olive Garden. Now, don't try to figure out who it was. It was nobody in this church. All right? I was at Olive Garden, and, 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 and we ordered the meal, and, and they brought the meal to us, and, and this individual ordered the chicken marcella. Is that how you say it? The chicken Marcella. I guess Brother O'Donnie's had that very frequently. <laughs> the chicken Marcella. Now, I never had that because I don't care for the chicken Marcella too much, but it looks really, really good. And if it tastes the way that it looks, and it's got to be so good that your taste buds will stand up and you want to slap yourself, it's so good. But that chicken Marcella looked good. And all of a sudden, they, they began to lay down our plates on the table. And I was beginning to prepare my meal and get everything situated, my fork in place and my spoon and my knife and grab me a breadstick. And, and, man, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. And all of a sudden, this individual spoke up and said, it's wrong. I thought, what's wrong? I mean, it was like someone was dead. It's wrong. So I just got quiet and waited to see what would happen next. The waiter said, what's wrong? The guy stood up. And I thought, Lord Jesus, help us right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Brother David, I got so embarrassed, man. I ducked my head just a little. And I'm not one to get embarrassed really easily. But I ducked my head and I thought, Lord, help us right now. Ah, Lord, help us. Cause this man to sit down and shut up, please, God, in Jesus' name. He didn't. The Holy Ghost wasn't moving in his life that day. The devil was all over him. He stood up and said, I am not going to eat this mess and shoved the plate across the table. And then that, that waiter was as kind as possible, said, okay, I'll take that back and correct it. And I looked at him and I said, what was wrong with that meal? He said, I just didn't like the way that it was plated. I said, it looked the way it should look. I said, it smelled the way it should smell. 
But I said it wasn't to your liking, so you made a fuss and a mess over things just because it wasn't to your liking. But I said it was a tremendous meal that anybody in this restaurant would have enjoyed. And I got mad. It wasn't the Holy Ghost. I got mad. It wasn't even inspiration. I got angry and got mad. I was angry but did not sin because I have the right to do that because the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. So I was in the Word and I was standing on the Word. I was just angry. And I said, that is uncalled for. Uh, He said, well, I'm not going to give him a very good tip. It's going to be very minimal because it wasn't to my liking. And I said, it was not his fault. I said, your spirit and your attitude was out of control. And I said, get your spirit and attitude control because I'm going to tip this man what he deserves. Because there was nothing wrong with what was brought to you. It was what you perceived was incorrect. Let me stop right here and say this. A lot of times God will plate things in our life. And God will... I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And God will prepare things in our life. But because we perceive it not to be what we think it ought to be, we just say, well, God, I'm not giving you a tip. And God, I'm not doing this. And God, I'm not doing that. And we stand up at the table and shove it across the table and say, God, take it back. I've come to tell you we need a Holy Ghost revival that says, God, when you played it, when you give it to me, I know it's going to be good. And I'm not going to... If I can just see what God has prepared for me, I know it's going to bring me substance in my life. He said, well, I'm just leaving that cat a penny. I said, you're wrong. I said, you're ungodly. You know what I did? Sister Shauna doesn't know anything about this, but she'll probably find out about it from this point forward. I was so angry. I pulled out a $20 bill. Laid it smack dab on the table over top of his penny. And I said, I'm telling you right now, you may want to give a tip of a penny. But therefore, I'm giving a tip of a 20 because it wasn't that man's fault. Uh, Let me stop right here and say this, uh, that there may be some of you, you'll just tip God a little bit here and tip God a little bit there. But there are some people in this house that understand and know, I'm going to give God everything. Uh, I'm going to give him my finances. Uh, I'm going to give him my time. Uh, I'm going to give him my effort. Uh, I'm going to give him my sacrifice uh, because God has been too good to me. Uh, And I can order anything off the menu uh, and God will bring it to me uh, and it's going to be what I need it to be. I am going to give God everything. Shout, I'm going to give God everything. Give God everything. Musicians come. Living churches dream great dreams of God. And dead churches relive nightmares. Living churches do not have the word can't in their vocabulary. Dead churches have nothing but that word in their vocabulary. I get so sick and tired of people saying, well, God can't do this and God can't do that. I get tired of that. Or God won't do this and God won't do that. Or this is not going to happen or that's not going to transpire. Or this is not going to fall on us. Or, or you're not going to receive this blessing or that blessing or this provision. Or, or I, I just can't handle that. It was all the way back in the Old Testament when they sent the 12 spies to spy, to spy out the land of Canaan. Yes, sir. What happened? Two came back with a good report. Yes, sir. Ten came back with a negative report. Two said, we can take it. Yeah. We, we can take that land. Yeah. We, we, we can possess that land. Yeah. We can overcome every giant in that land. But ten said, oh, no. We can't do that. 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 And what happened? Because of the can't that got in their spirit, they didn't. There was a whole generation that died off in the wilderness because they let a can't get in their spirit and not a will and not I can. There are churches in the day and hour that we are living in that are dying churches because they have a can't and not a I can. Well, you'll say, well, what about God? Yeah, God. We got to have God. But the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Living churches evangelize. Dead churches fossilize. 
There is no such thing in the Christian life as maintenance. I've told you before and I'm going to say it again. I am not one that likes to maintain an aquarium. This church is not an aquarium for me just to maintain or for you just to maintain. The Bible has called us to be fishers of men. The church is either going forward or the church is going backward. If you are not growing spiritually, then you are dying spiritually. There is no way getting around that reality. It follows that as a church or a community of faith. We are not created for maintenance. We are created for movement. Everything that is living. Wish these sunflowers were real. They're not. But everything that is living has movement, has life, has growth. But you know, the sad thing about it is, is that now you can get a lot of things that are artificial. When you walk into a sanctuary or when you walk into a floral shop, nowadays they are so good in producing artificial flowers that they look real. I recall a time that I walked into Charleston Cut Flowers. And when I walked in there, I saw some roses. And I wanted to get some roses for Sister Shauna. And I noticed that these particular roses wasn't in the cooler. And I thought, well, what's, what's, that's strange. Usually keep them in the cooler. So I grabbed me a bunch of, and I thought, those are the most beautiful roses I've ever seen in my life. Pink, yellow, red, this goes on. Grabbed them. As soon as I touched them, I realized that they were artificial. We're living in a day and an hour. For too many people of God have become artificial. Mm, Can I just teach to you just for a few moments later? Artificial. They look it. They walk it to some degree. They practice it. They come to church and they raise their hands. They shake the preacher's hands. They dress You see, there's no fragrance to that which is. To that which is artificial. Could it be that when we come to the house of God, That there is a bouquet before the Lord. And in that bouquet, you have the real and you have the artificial. And when worship goes forth, that which is alive will bring forth an aroma. But that which is artificial, when they begin to demonstrate, there's no. Who will God bless? Who will God touch? What is a sweet-smelling savor to God? It's to that which is alive and real. I want you to stand to your feet today, if you would, in the presence of the Lord. As we read the book of Acts, we find the church didn't start out as an organization, but a living on fire organism with signs and wonders following the believers. I've come to tell you today that God 
is desiring to bless us and touch us like never before. And that without the Spirit, there is a smell of death to everything we do. His Spirit is going to bring us increase. His Spirit is going to bring help for us to accomplish the task that is before us. His Spirit is going to bring a mighty breakthrough in our lives. And His Spirit is going to give us divine direction. His Spirit is going to give us wisdom and understanding. And His Spirit is what's going to cause the church to reach the destiny and the purpose that God has for it. His Spirit is the answer to growth in your life. And His Spirit is the answer to an unprecedented move of God and his spirit is the key to a great harvest and a great revival. The effectiveness of the church is due not to human programming or ingenuity but to the spirit and power of God in our midst. Do you desire the spirit of God to rest upon you like never before? Do you desire to move in the spirit of God like never before? It looks it. It comes across as real. But I can't smell anything. But for me to make something that is artificial to smell like others then I've got to use that which man has manufactured to spray on that which is artificial and to bring forth a smelling scent. It's not by might nor by power and it's not by what man can do and it's not by what man can develop And it's not by man's ideologies and theologies. It's by the spirit of almighty God. The Holy Ghost is here right now. The presence of God is here right now. Here's what I want you to do, every person in this house. There's a divine spirit of God that desires to settle in this house right now in every individual And I know some of you have been in the church for a long, long time. But there's a renewing and a refreshing of the Spirit of God that desires to rest in this house right now. If you would, I want you to reach over and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now. Just reach over and take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now. And I want you to raise that hand in the air right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to pray right now in the name of the Lord. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now in the name of the Lord. Come on, do you desire to be an apostolic church? Come on, do you desire to be an apostolic church? Come on, do you desire to be an apostolic church? Do you desire to be an apostolic church? Do you desire to be an apostolic church? Do you desire to be a powerful church? Do you desire to have signs and wonders rock by your hands it's not going to come through the artificial but it's going to come through the demonstration and the power of God right now you are a sweet smelling savor unto God right now right now you're a sweet smelling savor and almighty God right now you're a sweet smelling savor and almighty God Worship and adore. I want to tell you more. Oh Lord, how much I really do love you. Hold on just a moment. I want you to raise your hands as high as you can raise them right now, if you would. You're a conduit. 
to the Spirit of God right now. You're a conduit to the Spirit of God right now in the name of the Lord. Do you desire a renewing to rest on you right now? Do you desire refreshing to rest upon you right now? <laughs> Do you desire it right now? It's all over you right now. It's in this house right now. Now with your hands raised, I want you to raise your voice as loud as you can raise. And I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. That's it. That's the Spirit of God. That's it. That's the Spirit of God. That's it. That's the Spirit of God. Yes, I That's the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit of God right now. God, I desire the Spirit of the Lord to rest upon me like never before. I desire the Spirit of the Lord to rest upon me like never before, oh God. I desire the Spirit of the Lord to rest upon me like never before, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I praise you today, God. I praise you today, God. Let your spirit fall now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, how I love you. Lord. 